Good evening. Dustin Zarni here, Democratic Elections Commissioner of Onondaga County. Welcome to Commissioner Nakara. I'm a day late uh, on my new schedule. I'm not really doing all that well with my new schedule, but I'm trying. I'm really trying. Um, we're very, very busy, and that's why. Uh, but yesterday was my son's birthday. My, my dear son, Grant, was 15, and uh, we wanted to go spend time at a movie together. And by the time we were done at the movie, I was very tired. So I couldn't get the commissioner in the car out last yesterday, but I'm getting it out today. Um, and today's commissioner in car is we're talking about the presidential primary early voting that is ongoing right now and the village elections that have wrapped up. So let's start with the things that are over, <laughs> the, right? Uh, Fayetteville. Baldwinsville and Manoa Village elections were last Tuesday, a week ago, and we just certified those elections today. And why did it take so long to certify? Normally, we can certify village elections within a couple of days uh, because we don't have to wait for absentees to come in. They have to be in by election night. And so usually the next day or two, we can certify. But we didn't, weren't able to do that this time because there were mandated hand counts for Fayetteville, and uh, Baldwinville trustee races that we conducted yesterday on Monday. And in the middle of all this, of course, we had early voting going for the presidential primary, which a lot of our staff uh, in getting ready for early voting and election day. Uh, so there was a lot going on. So we, you know, we, it took us a little time to get the certification done, but we certified today. Um, first off, let's go over what we found out on election night in these three villages. In Manoa, there were no races contested. There was a fire, you know, a volunteer fire proposal. Uh, everyone was elected, uh, and the volunteer fire proposal was elected. That was the easy one. A uh, couple hundred voters. In Fayetteville, about 900 voters. A lot of voting, uh, you know, in Fayetteville. Maybe close to a thousand voters actually, um, and uh, the. The mayor's race was uncontested, so the mayor could, uh, was uh, elected there. Uh, the trustee race uh, came down to, on election night, a five-vote five margin. Uh, and then uh, when absentees were counted the next day, a 10-vote margin. So that had to go to a hand count, which Donna Freilu, um won the, uh, the third write-in by 10, or the third trustee race by 10 votes. And... Uh, she will join the Baldwinsville board. Um, and they also had a proposition on their ballot. They actually had two propositions on their ballot for moving their elections to either June or to November. And the voters overwhelmingly um, uh, in Baldwinsville, that's what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, in Baldwinsville, overwhelmingly uh, um, had uh, chose November. So their next village election will be in 2026, um, and it'll be in November of 2026 for uh, the the village trustee spots that were not up this time. Uh, so that's what's happened in Baldwinsville. They rejected the June proposition. You may remember that there was some concern that they would accept both propositions. The public would accept both, and we wouldn't know what to do. Well, the public made a decisive decision. Uh, overwhelmingly choosing um, November elections and rejecting June elections. So those uh, elections will move. So that was Baldwinsville. Now going to Fayetteville, which had about, you know, a thousand uh, voters as well. Um, Fayetteville had a mayor spot up that was contested. Mike Smalls won that uh, election. He's the current deputy mayor. He now becomes the mayor. And then they had a trustee spot that was a vote for two. Uh, but th there were three candidates, and Casey Cleary Hammerstadt uh, was the top vote getter. She won by about 50 votes or so. Uh, but the second race between Dan Kinsella and Jane Rice, who were sitting trustee members on the board, uh, came down to, uh, on election night, I believe it was four votes that Jane Rice was up, and then when the absentees were counted, it was two votes that Dan Kinsella was up on. Well, because it was within the hand count, we had that hand count on Monday, and those uh, vote totals uh, ended up being three votes that Dan Kinsella won his race, and Jane Rice um, will, will not win. 
but there's a wrinkle here. And let me tell you why. Well, the vo village of Fayetteville also overwhelmingly voted to move the village elections to November. However, and that's good. Uh, good for them. Uh, they had a straightforward question. They answered it. The next village election will take place in November, but it will be November of this year. And here's why. Uh, Mike Smalls is a current trustee member. And as a current trustee member, um, he is the deputy mayor, but now he won mayor. So he's taking over the mayor's position. So the trustee position now becomes open. And when the trustee position becomes open, uh, that means it must go on the next uh, general election, which is now in November of this year. Because you don't get to... What will happen is the village board will appoint someone to serve until no, uh, November. And then the voters of Fayetteville will have to vote to give them a two-year term uh, to fill the vacancy uh, created by Mike Smalls moving to mayor. And then that person will then run for a four-year term in 2026. So by moving the elections to November, but also selecting Mike Smalls as the mayor, they've actually created a uh, interesting opportunity where they're going to have a uh, village election this November uh, for this open trustee sl slot for the two fill vacancy created by Mike Smalls. So we're going to get to see that, you know, we saw how many people voted in the village election in March. We're going to find out later this year just how many people are going to vote in that trustee race. Uh, and we'll really get to see, you know, some of the questions that we've had about whether people are going to stay on the ballot and vote in a presidential year or if it's going to be, um, you know, ignored. That's going to be answered. Uh, we are going to get a good answer on that in Village of Fayetteville this year. So those three elections are done. They're certified. The results will go up on the website probably tomorrow. But we have sent the certification to the village clerks and they are ready to go. Now, now we have uh, to move on to the presidential primary that is happening. And it actually started on Saturday. Uh, the presidential primary for early voting started on Saturday. And there are some differences in this year's early voting. Well, for one, not a lot of you are going out and voting. Uh, not yet, anyways. Um, we've seen an uptick on Monday and Tuesday. But over the weekend, we're some of the two slowest days of early voting that we've ever seen, and we know why, right? Um, first, we had a snowstorm on Saturday. That always dampers uh, people going out. But really, the real reason is there's no competition. Um, on the Republican side, Donald Trump is the only candidate that is actively campaigning. Uh, and Chris Christie, Vivek Ramaswamy, and Nikki Haley remain on the ballot, but they, are, they have suspended their campaigns. On the Democratic side, Joe Biden is obviously, has already gotten the, enough delegates to win the nomination. Same with Donald Trump on the Republican side. And he's actively campaigning. But Dean Phillips and Marianne Williamson are the, the other two people on the ballot. And they, uh, at one point, suspended their campaigns. But Marianne Williamson, um, she suspended her campaign in mid-February and then in late February, unsuspended her campaign. And Dean Phillips suspended his campaign in uh, early March. So, but there's not seen, so technically there is a, there is a real race there. But in reality, I think most people believe that, you know, that the, this race is over. So why are we spending all this money to have early voting, election day voting, and, uh, um, and, and, and all the things that go along with the election when this race is already decided. So I want to ex explain New York law to all of you and also talk about a little fellow named Andrew Yang. <laughs> so New York law says that uh, so many days before a presidential primary, in this case it was like February 6th was the day, I believe. Um, they, if a candidate has qualified for the presidential primary, they have an opportunity to get off the ballot. Um, if they're, they've decided to no longer be on the campaign. And that date was February 6th. On the Republican side, on February 6th, Chris Christie and Vivek Ramaswamy had already suspended their campaigns. But they never filed the paperwork 
to get off the ballot. Nikki Haley on February 6th was, had not suspended her campaign. In fact, she was quite active at that point. And uh, this is uh, shortly after the uh, New Hampshire primary. I believe it was a couple days before that. So, you know, she was still campaigning. Uh, and thus went past the deadline. On the Democratic side, Dean Phillips, Marianne Williamson, and Joe Biden were still actively campaigning and, uh, um, and, and not suspended their campaign yet. So they got past that February 6th window. And once you got past that February 6th window, we are locked in in New York. We must hold an election um, for, for, for presidential primary preference because of Andrew Yang. And why is that? Well, in 2020, um, and he's one of many, but he was one. <laughs> in 2020, in the middle of the pandemic, we uh, in New York uh, had a uh, April 17th or something like that, mid-April primary at that point. And you may remember this was when the coronavirus was just wreaking havoc everywhere. Everything was closed down. And uh, the governor, Governor Cuomo at the time, uh, at the urging of all of the elections commissioners in New York, uh, suspended the presidential primary and moved it to June. Um, you got to remember, at that point, absentee ballotings have already gone out. So it wasn't just that easy to do. But he moved the election to June, and, uh, and, and there was no Republican primary because Donald Trump was unopposed. And uh, there was a Democratic primary, and at the time of moving it, the, the question was still open of who was going to win. Um, Super Tuesday had just happened, and um, a lot of people had started to coalesce around Joe Biden, but there were still a few active candidates. Shortly after the pandemic, almost every candidate in the Democratic uh, field had decided to uh, drop out of the presidential primary. So, and only Joe Biden remained. Well, the state board commissioners uh, in uh, mid-April decided that uh, because there was no viable candidates and because of the, uh, of the emerging health crisis, um, that they would uh, cancel the presidential primary. Um, the Democratic state board commissioners, Andrew Spano and uh, Doug Kellner, and this is a move I actually agreed with. Um, and the reason uh, we agreed with it is because of the health crisis. At that point, um, although some counties, including Onondaga, were going to have to open up in June anyways because of the, uh, um, the presidential uh, or the congressional primaries we have, there were about 23 counties across New York State that did not have to open up in June unless they had to hold a presidential primary for the Democratic election, which was all but sewn up. And especially in June, all but sewn up. And because of the emerging health crisis, we did not want to hold that election. Andrew Yang and a few activists went to court and uh, said that the State Board Commission didn't have the authority to do this and that we must hold that election anyways. And they won. In, I think, mid-May, the court did agree that uh, we had to hold this presidential primary. So, that's why we're holding it now. <laughs> um, there is no mechanism after that February 6th date to hold a president, or to suspend a presidential primary. It's just, there is none. Uh, and the courts have already said that we have to hold it. And if we have to hold it, that means we have to hold it like we would any other election. That means all of our polling places have to open, or a fair amount of our polling places have to open, and our early voting sites have to open. But when passing the April 2nd uh, primary, the legislature did make some changes to early voting because Easter Sunday happens right before, um, you know, uh, and, and that would be the last day of early voting. Um, so the legislature actually said, well, we're still going to do 72 hours of early voting, but we're going to do it in eight days instead of nine days. Um, and we are required by law to open up so many early voting sites for every eligible voter. 
And in Onondaga County, uh, we have about 200,000 eligible voters. There's 30,000 per site. Uh, that would have been seven sites to open up. We actually opened up eight because at the time we had to make the decision, that was in mid-February. We had to announce our early voting sites. And at that time, Nikki Haley was still having an active campaign and so was Dean Phillips. And we had saw in other states some pretty high turnout numbers. And so because Onondaga County is a big county, we decided to open up eight sites instead of seven. Um, and, uh, but we, we, we have cut back on the staffing at these eight sites. Um, we have our bare minimum staffing. Uh, we felt we could plump it up if we if it was an active primary, but that's how we're looking to save money is by eliminating uh, as many staffing positions because that's we don't pay for the sites we pay for the people that are working the sites. So there's a bare minimum of staffing, and of course there's been no waits so long so far. So we've done that. Another thing we did was we eliminated 21 poll sites on election day that were in schools. Uh, so on April 2nd, and we'll talk about this more next week on Monday, uh, but if you're going to the polling place, you're going to be getting a letter in the mail right now telling you to go to a different polling place for those 21 sites. There's not every school, but a lot of schools we were able to get out of by sending all those voters to another polling place that was near there um, and uh, able to accommodate those voters because... There's not many voters going to be voting on April 2nd. And school was in session on, on April 2nd. And we didn't want to uh, inconvenience the schools. Uh, you know, we, we have to do that in June. We have to do that in November. You know, by law, they have to give those polling places to us. But we really felt like we wanted to try to help some of these uh, schools out and not disrupt their day for an election that may or may not be very... Uh, you know, traffic. It won't, we have a lot of traffic in it. So those schools are temporarily closed. You can go to our website and find out where your polling place is. If your polling place was moved, you'll be getting a letter or already got a letter because we mailed those out. And you can, there will also be signs on the polling places directing you to the right one. Of course, you can go early vote and not have to worry about that. So we did that to try to save some money as well. Still, this is probably going to cost us anywhere as close to two hundred fifty dollars to $350,000 to hold this primary here in Onondaga County. And again, it's not something that we have a choice here. There's a law. We have to follow it. There's a court ruling. We have to follow it. C'est la vie. Uh, we are spending that money. And uh, there's nothing anybody can do about that. Uh, it is the law. So, uh, you know, we're doing a lot to try to minimize uh you know, the cost, but when you hold an election, there are just certain things. You have to do all the registration. We've had overtime to get all that done. We just got it done today. Um, you know, even though voting starts on Saturday, that's the last day to register. So it takes a couple of days to get all of those uh, registrations uh, up to date. So, you know, that's what's going on with the presidential primary. So today is Tuesday. If you're watching this live, you still have a couple hours till 8 o'clock to get to the polls and vote today. Tomorrow, the polls are open from 11 to 8. Again, instead of 8 hours, it's open for 9 hours. Um, and that's on Wednesday. On Thursday and Friday and Saturday, polls will be open from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Go to onvote.net. You can get your early voting. You can also still get an absentee ballot if you request an absentee ballot. We will mail it out. We will mail them out as late as Saturday. Uh, you are not guaranteed to get that absentee ballot at this point because that's actually two weeks before the election day. 15 days before the election day is your guarantee date for us to mail it out. But here in Onondaga County, we try to get them out to as many people as possible. Uh, if you didn't get your absentee ballot but you still want to vote in the election, you can go to a polling site on election day or early voting. And you'll have to vote by affidavit, but those affidavits will count as long as you didn't return your absentee ballot. If you moved in Onondaga County, uh, you can vote by affidavit ballot. If you're not registered as a Democrat or Republican, you can get a court order. Um, yeah, but uh, but if you're but if you're registered to vote and not registered as a Democrat or Republican, you will not be able to vote in the primary. And also, the last thing uh, I want to mention 
is um, that the whole blank ballot thing that I've seen on um, on, on, on uh, uh, election, uh, you know, on Twitter and stuff like that about Biden. There are no write-ins on the presidential primary. You cannot write in a candidate's name by law. There is no write-in box to even do it in. And if you write something on the ballot, it actually throws out your entire ballot. So you shouldn't do that either. Uh, some people have, have suggested we they should do a blank ballot. And while we do record the number of ballots cast, and uh, we do record uh, you know how many votes are in each candidate, the state board does not report out what we call voids, uh, which are ballots that don't have a, a, a vote, a valid vote on them, either a blank ballot or a if somebody chose more than one candidate. They don't report that out, and the state board is going to report out the statewide totals because we give all of our results in a countywide basis to the state board. Now, on our website, we will have voids on there, um, and you can see how many people have a void ballot, but it won't tell you necessarily how many people have a blank ballot because it could be people who selected more than one. Um, you know, so uh, that is just the law. That's what we do here in New York. So there is no write-in option. There is no uncommitted option. And the blank ballot option, um, some of the people saying that that's a valid option, I just want to advise you, it may not actually be reported that way. So um, you are, uh, you have every right to go to the, pa to the vo voting booth and vote however way you want, whether it's a blank ballot or not. I'm just saying it may not actually be reported. So that, that is something that I wanted to get out there um, so people know. Um, but, all right, that's it for Commissioner in a Car. I am really going to try to get on to my uh, three times a week schedule here. Friday, I will have my Zoom with Zarni with uh, Joanne Denise of the Brennan Center. It's been sitting in the can, ready to go, and I just haven't got to it. On um, This weekend, I will do... Uh, hopefully on Easter Sunday, a weekly walk on the village elections that we just had. Uh, and, uh, you know, we got a little data on that, and uh, I want to show you it. So uh, that is what we got going on. Uh, on DustinZarney.com, you can like and subscribe. You'll get an email every time I post a notification. And um, uh, whether it's an interview or whatever, it's always free. I never take outside money. I never... Uh, um, you know, have ads. Uh, it's something that I pay for myself out of my desire to enhance my public outreach and public education. And my role as your elections commissioner or one of your elections commissioner here in Onondaga County. Thank you very much and enjoy your day. Go out and vote. Bye-bye.